Hello, massive. Okay, or mini, I don't know what you want to be called. It's your favorite host, the monk with the most. I'll be back with more creepy pasta. I know, right? It's great, isn't it? It's great. It's really great. But no, I, I say creepy pasta, but that's incorrect. Because I was trolling the creepy pasta website, and let's just say, as you could probably tell after last week's, normal porn to normal people wasn't that good a story. And it, uh, everything I've looked at and suggested reading has just either been too long or it's just been bad. So I've decided to troll Reddit because I have been tipped off about uh, something known as a no sleep on Reddit. So, without further ado, we will begin. And today's will be I will be sleeping on the couch for the foreseeable future by a guy named Mongrelhart. I apologize for any typos I may make, as it is a little hard to type with these bandages on. I couldn't think of any place to put this where I'll be met with some sympathy, and I'll treat it as in that case who's clearly out for attention, except here, where I heard the doctor say something about self-inflicted injuries. There's no way I could have, or would have done this to myself. I had been home from a Super Bowl party for about an hour now. Yes, I was drinking, but nowhere near enough where I could possess the ability to hallucinate that heavily, in a way that just felt so real that it chilled me down to the be my very bones. My housemate Rick, not his real name, and I were sitting in the living room watching TV, when I heard a small clatter and thud come from my bedroom. I sighed because I thought it was Woody, a nine-month-old kitten. He likes to get into my room and get up on my desk and proceed to knock out very fragile things onto the floor. So I got up and went into my room to scold the kitten and tell him to get off my desk. I didn't see him anywhere, so I turned to walk out of my room. As I turned, I got pretty dizzy and my ears began to ring. I didn't think much of it, since I've had a pretty nasty head cold for some days now. The weird thing was... But it was kind of an ear ringing that seemed to fill my entire head cavity. I couldn't shake it off. I couldn't wiggle my ear to get rid of it. And it almost seemed to get into my vision, too. I grabbed onto the wall and stared at myself. And I closed my eyes tight, trying to will the ringing to stop. I finally did it a few seconds later. But I still held onto the wall, just in case it came back. Right in front of my face was my thermostat, and I realized that even though it was set to about 70, I was suddenly freezing. I began to shiver slightly, and I could just about see my breath in front of my face. I tapped on the thermostat and turned the dial back and forth, but nothing clicked on. That was when my bedroom door slammed shut, crushing the middle and ring fingers on my right hand. I screamed pretty loud before I covered my mouth with my left hand, squinted through my suddenly approaching tears. I heard my housemate run down the hall to my room, asking me what the hell happened. I know he kept talking, but I wasn't sure what he was saying because the ringing came back, and the sulfur smell started. I tried prying my hand out of the doorway, thinking that maybe... It had just cleanly chopped off my fingers, and I could pull free. Of course, it wasn't that easy, and my fingers were stuck. So I reached down, opened the door, but it wouldn't budge. I cried to Rick to stop messing around and opened up the door. He said he wasn't doing anything, and I heard him try to pull the knob himself. It still wouldn't move. That was when the lights went on out. Now I'm terrified in the dark. I sleep in a nightlight near my bed and string lights across my the room. I can't handle being outside at night without being under some street light. So I'm sure you can imagine how scared I was to be shut in my room with a weird smell and a strange temperature fluctuation and my fingers were jammed in a mysteriously shut door in the dark. I started clawing at the door with my left hand, because for some reason I thought that punching and pushing the door would magically open it. I can tell you right now, that doesn't work. My ears continued to ring, 
and I could barely hear Rick on the other side of the door pleading with me to help. Open the door, or just generally do something to get my fingers on stuff. That was when I felt hot breath on my neck, and that nagging feeling that someone is staring at you. I continued to punch and pry at the door, feeling the slippery warm blood from my stubbed fingers merging with the blood coming from my left hand. I had been prying at the rough wood for two minutes straight. I stopped dead in my tracks, though, when I heard the voice. It was a voice that sounded like it came from deep, deep underground. Like its source hadn't seen sunlight or breathed fresh air in decades. It was as if it was speaking with a mouth full of moss and worms. I felt my bladder go weak. Somehow, over the ringing of my ears, the voice spoke to me as if it was within my own skull. It only said, it begins. That was it, for two words, and my lights turned on, the ringing stopped, the temperature returned to normal, and I heard the door unlatch. Rick flung my door open and just barely caught me as I headed for the ground. Everything started to go black. I woke up in the ER with my ring fingers in a cast, and those on my left hand heavily bandaged. I don't know what Rick told the doctor, but he didn't seem to want to question me about it any further. I took a prescription slip and headed back to the apartment. I just stood in the doorway of my room for about five minutes, the blood actually from my stand hand still on the wall and on the door. The lights are on, I'm afraid to go in there when to get my pajamas. Never mind actually sleep within those walls. I don't know what's going on in there, where it came from, why it's doing this, whatever it has only just begun, and I'm not ready for it. Yeah, th that one was quite interesting. Uh, so, check it out guys, check it out. It's, uh, it is, I'm ready, no sleep obviously. And uh, check out a load of other good stories on there, and maybe recommend a story for me to tell on this series of your own. Thank you very much.